All right, so this is going to be part two to what if Deku had wave motion. So with that being said, let's just roll the intro. All right, so before we start the what if, I'd like to say that if you haven't already, go check out my kind of newest series, UA Year One. And, you know, episode two is going to come out pretty soon. Right when I have all of class 1E done, uh, which you guys can help if you go to my Discord, which I'll, my Discord server, which I'll have linked down in the description. So yeah, if you guys want to join uh, the series, then go to my Discord and do uh, put your suggestions there. We almost have all the, we, we still need a lot of um, characters for each class, because we're, we're going to need 20 for each. And there's, um, there's around 8 I believe um, classes in total or seven between those two and you guys can come and suggest your characters and we'll put them in that class so yeah I'll give you a quick synopsis of the series and see if you guys are interested and if you are you can click the link in the description and go watch the first episode uh, so it's a hundred years before the start of the anime uh, my hero and it's in a world where it's the second generation of quirk users and only 30% of the population actually has quirks. And those who do are actually discriminated, uh, discriminated against. The story follows Apollo, who um, was recruited to a newly formed high school called UA. This high school is for quirk users. And basically, he challenges the system that's established there to become the number one hero or the number one student and hero later on. So if you guys are interested in that kind of plot, then you could go to um, the first episode and watch it and tell me what you think about it. So yeah. Uh, and then uh, pretty soon, I just got done watching um, No Game No Life. So pretty soon I'm going to do a one season run on that. And then um, you, guys can, you guys can hear my opinion on that series. So yeah, uh, that's going to come out pretty soon, pretty much this week. And yeah. So in the last part, we just got done with Deku basically um, just getting into UA, right? So yeah. So we would actually um, start off our story at Deku's house. And this is when he would get the letter from UA. All Might would have appeared from the kind of hologram and tell him that he got a, you know, one of the top scores. Since not only did he get villain points, but he also got hero points because he saved Uraraka. And Uraraka also got some points because she saved Deku at the last second. And yeah, so Deku would be ecstatic for um, listening to this, right? Because he just got into UA. And, um, you know, he'd be excited to tell his sister and his parents because his sister goes to UA and uh, they'd be really proud of him because, of, you know, he tried a lot. He tried really hard to get in. So, I think um, we could skip a bit to the first day of UA, and we could say that um, at this point in the series, uh, they'd be scouting people for the top heroes or the top students, and Nedure would be would have been scouted for this because uh, she wasn't like she wasn't part of the big three until the, her senior year, right? So yeah, so this is when she would have. Um, trained a lot with Deku and worked up on his stamina. So Deku would walk into his class and he would see Bakugo there. And Bakugo would see him as well, but he wouldn't really want to talk to him because they're not really friends because they're just really acquaintances. They just know of each other and they don't really talk to each other. And Ida would still be yelling at Bakugo, telling him to put his feet down and things like that. This is when Ida would turn around and talk to Deku. And he would have heard that Deku would have gotten the top score. And he would have praised Deku for seeing that there was more than one uh, variable in the kind of test. Deku would be like, no, I didn't know about it. I just did what was right. And things like that. Then Ida would say, like, yes, you're right. If, I w if you know, situations were different, I would have helped her too. Right? And uh, Ida's kind of beating himself up over this. And this is when Uraraka would come. And she would basically introduce herself and say thank you to Deku who helped her 
and also Deku would introduce himself to, um, you know, her. So after this was done, this is when Aizawa would walk through or in his, like, kind of, he would be in his, like, sleeping bag and basically t saying, or he wouldn't be really saying anything at this point, but people would be kind of confused that a person in this kind of sleeping bag just kind of walked in and they don't know why he's there. And it turns out that it's actually their homeroom teacher, Aizawa. So, um, after this was done, he basically says that there's going to be a quirk assessment and they're actually going to skip orientation. People are kind of confused, but they go along with it until he says, uh, or he's like, oh yeah, whoever these, whoever does the worst actually gets expelled. And everyone's freaking out like, what? You can't do that. And he says, yeah, I can. UA lets me teach however I want. So just go out there and hope you don't get expelled. So everyone would be kind of forced to go out there. And yeah. So um, since um, he wants to show the difference between normal strength and um, using a quirk, this is when they would choose Deku to actually throw the ball since he got the top score. So Deku would have thrown it with his normal strength and we could say that he got around 80 meters with his just normal strength right so after this is done this is when he said this is when Aizawa tells him to use his quirk and this is when um this is when Deku actually uses um wave motion in combination with throwing the ball to make it fly a lot farther so wave motion I think um would have enough impact to probably get it over two kilometers basically maybe three at a hundred percent so yeah Deku would be pretty um pretty strong at this point with wave motion so after that was done people would see the difference between just using your normal strength and your um quirk and Baku would be shocked to know that Deku was actually number one and he was number two which would get him a little bit mad but he wouldn't really keep a grudge towards Deku because it's not like he was they weren't really rivals right so after this was done this is when um they do the other tests and um Deku would get pretty he, he would get pretty well score in the uh race because he could use wave motion to propel him forward so yeah as this is uh, done he would probably get around first or second depending on if Ida it really depends on Ida because I'm pretty sure Ida got number one so um I, let's just say Deku got second place so for the grip strength Deku can't really use his wave motion to um increase his strength really so he would still get around uh, and I think in the anime, he wasn't using one for all for that part. So he would, uh, he normally got like around 58 kilograms. So in this one, we could say he got around 70. So yeah. Um, after that was done, he would have, um, those are the main kind of um, things, right? He already did the ball throw, which was around three kilometers. So yeah. So the person, I guess we could say in this one, who would get, who would get the least, would be, uh, I think her name is Mina. No, not Mina. Um, the basically the invisible girl because she wouldn't have a um, a particular category that she would have high stats in to boost her average. So she would get she would be the one leading. And in this one, I'm not gonna say that Deku actually stands up for her. That um, Aizawa just expels her, right? So she's out of the series. So yeah. After this, um, we could skip a few kind of periods, the last one, and this is when they actually introduce All Might to um, as their combat instructor, right? So this is when Deku would see All Might again, and All Might would recognize Deku. And I think Deku's hair would be a little bit different in this one, since uh, they would have he would have different parents. So I, I think his hair color would be the same as Nejire. So that kind of um, light purple, I guess. Instead of the green that he norm normally has. So yeah. Um, 
So after this, this is when uh, All Might would introduce himself and basically say, I am here as your combat instructor. And he would look around the classroom and he would be like, oh, young Hado, since Deku's last name is different in this one. It's uh, Nedre's last name, which is Hado. So he'd be like, young Hado, I could see that you got into UA, you know, um, and I heard that you have the same uh, quirk as your sister, Nedre, who's part of the uh, big three. Since at this point, I think um, All Might would get information about the big three since uh, he was getting that before he became a teacher. So he would have known about the big three and Nedure. So he would have connected the dots between um, uh, him, like the kid that he saved, looking like uh, the girl and also having the same hair color. And this is when Deku would be like, how would you know my sister was Nedure? And this is when he would point out like, oh, you guys have the same quirk and you guys look pretty much this or you have the same hair color right since uh not everyone has like different types of like special or unique kind of hair colors like nejire has so it'd be easy to pick them out so after that was done people would be cut would be like whoa you you know all might and basically this is when um izuku would explain the story about how a villain was about to attack him but he fend him off until all might was able to arrive so People would be like, wow, we were able to defend the villain for that long. People would kind of build up this kind of respect for Deku. And this is when uh, Bakugo would be kind of getting mad that everyone's kind of paying attention to Deku, right? Because he never thought anything special about him, right? So after this was done, this is when they would go to um, the kind of... They would pick out their super or their... Uh, hero costumes right so i'm not sure what the hero costumes could be for deku i guess it'd be another kind of uh kind of skin tight suit similar to neji rays but i don't think it'd be the same as hers so yeah we could say that it's something similar but not really the only thing that would be similar is that they both be like a skin tight suit so after this was done this is when they actually pick out the teams for the villain versus um heroes and it would be the same teams Uraraka and Deku versus um Ida and Bakugo so in this one it's gonna end up a little different since Bakugo doesn't really have a reason not to listen to Ida like he did in, the can in canon because in canon he had that kind of grudge against Deku but in this one he doesn't really so Bakugo would be more um he would have more reason to listen to Ida than to just strike forward if that makes sense so Ida's plan is basically to have them come to him and basically take him up that way and maybe run run down the clock to get a win. So in this one, Deku and Uraraka would look at the plans like the usual and they would walk in. Right. So after this was done, this is when um, he does. They don't really hear anything. So they continue to go up the kind of flights of stairs until they get to the top. This is when Baku is there. And also Ida and Bakugo would rush towards him. So what happens this what happens after this is that Deku asks Uraraka to make him weightless so it'd be easier to maneuver. Maneuver over the kind of um uh place since he'd be able to push himself a lot faster using his wave motion. So she does that and he's able to easily dodge um uh Bakugo's attack and basically charges towards him and actually basically tackles him through the ground to the next floor underneath them and this is when um Ida's basically by himself with Uraraka and Uraraka's um trying to go towards the bomb right and Ida has to pick it up and starts running around with it so after this is done this is when um Deku starts fighting hand to hand with um with Bakugo, but he has a slight advantage since he's in the air and he's a lot more uh, weightless, so he's a lot faster. So uh, Bakugo goes for an explosion, and Deku tries to use his wave motion to kind of block it. This is when it gives the opportunity for Bakugo to go behind him and blast him in the back. Uh, this is when it this would push Deku towards the wall pretty harshly because he has no weight and be a lot easier to do so. After that, Deku would get up and kind of 
push himself from the wall using a little bit of his um, wave, right? This would push him back and basically he would kick Bakugo as he would do this. Bakugo would hit the ground and Bakugo would basically want to take this more seriously. So he decides to pull the pin on his uh, gauntlet, right? To kind of end this quickly since he knows it's going to take a long time. So what Deku does to kind of counteract this is that he uses um, a wave motion at 100% to kind of push it back. And this kind of collides together, which makes the energy of the two collisions go upwards. And this is when um, this is when uh, Uraraka would use her gravity to kind of um, have debris flying upwards and use a pillar to knock it at Ida and she would use the momentum to basically touch the bomb so after this was done um this is when they would be declared the winner and Bakugo and Neku when they would be, uh, basically Bakugo would be a little bit mad since uh he basically caused his team to lose so um Neku would basically uh be a sportsman or he'd be like really um He'd be like a nice guy about it and basically shake Bakugo's hand telling him that he's really strong and things like this. So I think at this point Bakugo would accept his generosity and shake his hand back. And basically this is when they would become more acquainted or with each other kind of like Hiroshima and Bakugo at this point. So yeah, after this was done, um, people would analyze the fight, they would get praise in some parts. And other parts not just how they would do in canon and this is when uh, after school after all this is done this is when uh, all might would bring deku to the teacher's lounge and basically explain one for all or yeah one for all and explain the origins and how it was created and basically offer him one for all deku would accept it since i don't think he'd be in the same uh he wouldn't have the same mindset of wanting to give it to his sister since um he doesn't he does look up to her for a bit but he's he doesn't like um it's kind of weird to explain but he, it's not the same admiration or not to the same level i guess that it was with tamaki i would um assume so yeah uh he would accept it and yeah so i'm gonna end it here and then the next part we'll go over um the usj and things like that so about the uh Mario thing right you guys want me to do a third part or another kind of video where it's like oh what if deku had permutation um i was thinking about that but i know that uh one of my other friends did it uh one of the sins a lazy what if or he his video was what if deku was Mario's brother and in this and that one he has permutation but uh, I don't know. I might do it if you guys really want it want me to do it But there's videos out there. That's kind of like that. So yeah um, It's coming in the video. So yeah <laughs>